Alrighty, you guys have been asking for this review for almost a week now, and it is finally coming out. Um, so I'm going to review my experience with Yukon Striker and what has been launched for Frontier Canada so far. Um, so as many of, you, many of you know, I'm pretty obsessed with Yukon Striker. The content has been a lot of Yukon Striker over the last week. Um, and I promise that will start to simmer down. I am just pumping out this content so I can start my um, very exciting content at Canada's Wonderland and other parks starting this Friday. Um, so Craig and I will have a big announcement about some stuff we're doing at Canada's Wonderland and I'm super excited about it, but let's get away from that and get into the video. So as you are seeing on the screen, we are showcasing some of the theming surrounding Yukon Striker. Um, and a lot of you know that Frontier Canada and the theming around Yukon Striker isn't done. So from what we gathered um, from having interviews with park officials and all that, construction fell a little bit far behind due to weather. Uh, nothing more, just weather. It was a really rainy month. It was a really rainy and cold month. So things fell far behind. They did an amazing job of staying on track with what is important. And Yukon Striker opened up on time and with some awesome theming to showcase around it. We were told there is more to come, which is really impressive as it is already really well themed. The attention to detail on the station is very impressive, um, all the way from the guardrails being crooked and very mine-like to some of the old names uh, dating back to the area this coaster is supposed to take place in. And uh, the Yukon Striker Mining Co, or the Striker Mining Co, um, I like the attention to detail on all the boxes and cases, and there are so much more to come out. I don't know if anyone has driven on the highway and driven past the back area, but there are like hundreds, if not thousands of theming pieces in that storage lot still that have not been put out. Again, a lot of those are probably for Frontier Canada, but we were told that there is more theming to be added. Um, I really like the mining lights that they have. I like that they didn't install an LED light package on Yukon Striker. There are a lot of people who are like, how come there isn't one? I like that they didn't um, because again, this is supposed to take place in like the 1800s. Um, and I think an LED lighting package wouldn't make sense on a coaster that's supposed to be themed back then. I like the basic white mining lights that go up the lift hill. And I don't know if anyone's seen our picture that we posted a couple days ago. I'm gonna post it on here for you guys right now, but it looks stunning at night. Um, the merch store was not open to purchase things from, but Wonderland was very nice to have it open for the season pass holders to have a look at some of the merch and the building itself. I really like the merch building. It's gorgeous on the outside and on the inside and the merch is really awesome and there's more to be added so i can't wait to look at it this um friday um and start using my fun picks but yes i love the attention to detail that cedar fair has put into this project um so much detail that they've actually um took a system for loose articles in china and are using it here in canada so when you board yukon striker um at the top of the queue line you're gonna put your belongings in a bin a couple of bins and then the bin then gets dragged up over the station um, and then comes down the exit as your train enters the station thus making it very difficult for people to steal from you um, and a very cool um, system that also fits in with the mining um, they painted the bins to kind of look more uh, mining uh, like than they do in this video they're now a brown woodish color which is really stunning and I just love seeing those things move above the station it's definitely that extra little attention to detail now the trains the trains are very basic dive coaster trains they are no different than Val Ravens other than decal um, they feature the stadium style seating. A lot of BM coasters do this now. I think even their hyper coasters uh, do this for each cart on the train. Um, but everyone gets a good view on Yukon Strikers trains. The colors are great. So you have the copper um, or bronze, the silver and gold, and the decals to mimic that golden eagle look. Again, I really like the trains. They are very basic. Now, the most important part of the trains that a lot of people in the enthusiast community uh, we're upset about are the vest restraints and as a tall six foot three bigger guy I'm here to tell you these vest restraints are definitely the newer vest restraints I've been on gatekeeper I've been on Val Raven and uh, out of the three these are way more comfortable they move with you they do not lock so if I move my body forward the restraint is very comfortably going to move with me I tested it out I moved left right and forward I got airtime. Um, again, when I'm on Gatekeeper especially, my shoulders hurt a lot with these vest restraints. They dig into me. I do not like them. I hate 
the ride's best restraints for that. Valraven was much better experience, but I still felt restricted on Valraven. And these, I do not feel restricted at all. So for the enthusiast community, the vest restraints are actually really well designed. I think they're very similar to what Valkyria launched as well. So we heard that Valkyria launched this new vest restraint that does not lock and moves with you. And I can confirm that ours do as well. Now, um, the guest interaction. So I was paying attention to a lot of people's reaction to the ride and people are loving it. I interviewed people that travel for coasters go around the world for coasters and literally marathon some of the best B&M coasters out there. And everyone was thoroughly enjoying Yukon Striker from the theming to the high thrills. It's definitely an amazing addition. So it is 223 feet tall, the same as Val Raven. It is tied for the world record in height, but its drop is much larger than any other dive coaster out there. So it's 245 foot drop into an underwater tunnel. And let me tell you, that makes all the difference. I had not experienced anything like this on a coaster before. The vertical drop leading into a tunnel that I barely fit in um, height wise. So uh, for those of you that don't know, this coaster does have a height restriction. Um, there's a max height and I am pretty close to that max height. And that adds to the experience for me as I was very terrified on my first couple of rides because when you're held up there above the track or above the uh, tunnel, it's designed to look like a pinhole. So the park was um, has said that they designed the tunnel to make it look like you cannot fit or you're not going to fit. And that is very much so the case. Um, it definitely is a very <laughs> terrifying experience your first couple of rides. Um, and the inversion afterwards is absolutely amazing um, especially i'm going to definitely recommend you sit on the back row um right side of the train or front row right side of the train the right side of the train is definitely the side of the train you want to sit on um you get that extra little height in those inversions where you're held over and it adds to the experience i'm definitely leaning more towards again i'm going to be there friday i'm going to get try and get 20 rides on yukon striker i want to definitely get a good understanding of this coaster um, but I'm definitely going to recommend the back row. I think this coaster has a lot of airtime if you sit in the back row um, and it has a lot of airtime if you sit in the front row as well. But the airtime throughout the coaster is a, is a back row. I think this coaster is definitely a back row coaster. Um, if you're there in, in the day and it's your first ride, maybe sit on the front row. Um, but I definitely recommend the back row. It's my favorite on this coaster. You get dragged over that drop. You are barely being held over. You're kind of still almost horizontal to the drop. Um, so you get pulled over, which is absolutely amazing. And that little airtime hill into the helix actually provides you airtime, especially in the back row. You get dragged over the mid course break run drop. Um, and the runway on this coaster. And for those of you that don't know what a runway is, it's not featured on too many coasters to my knowledge. Again, I am not a super knowledgeable person when it comes to coasters around the world. I am very Cedar Fair and Six Flags um, and North American based, but um, the airtime going, in, uh, uh, sorry, the runway, the runway exiting the vertical loop provides this little bunny hop. Again, it's very hard to see, but when you're on the ride, you experience it. There's a, a part where it goes angled downwards towards the second Immelman, and you gain a lot of speed and there's a little hop and there is a little bit of airtime created due to the forces from that runway. And it's absolutely amazing. If you watch my reaction on the POV, you can actually see the forces building up on me. Um, I think I flinch at one of the parts and I, I didn't notice it until I watched it back. And then I wrote it a couple more times where I'm like, wow, this ride really builds up a lot of speed on that runway. I definitely love it. It's one of my favorite parts on the coaster. So the vertical loop to the second Immelman with the runway included, in my opinion, is the second best part on this ride next to the drop. Um, it's very hard to differ between the two because again, we know the drop's going to be amazing. So uh, the vertical loop runway section, I think does deserve a lot of credit for being a major part on such a massive coaster that is super thrilling. I know my friends that I rode with too definitely felt the same way. The runway was absolutely amazing. I do want to add that um, Helix at the end um, does not in the animation look forceful at all. Um, it looks slow. It doesn't look like it's going to do anything. I know a lot of people were complaining about this coaster having um, pacing issues, but I'm here to tell you that that thing hauls around that Helix. It has a lot of speed. It keeps you in your seat. Um, it was a lot more forceful than I was expecting. I was honestly one of those people that thought the second half or sorry, the last 
third of this ride was going to be really boring. I mean, it definitely looked boring in the animation. It didn't hype it up, but it's super photogenic. It's got a lot more forces than you're expecting. And that pop of airtime before it definitely provides airtime in the back row again. Definitely um, a super exciting ride. Again, a lot of you are probably like, where does this rank at Canada's Wonderland for you? Um, it is my new number one. So um, I do have a new ranking of coasters at Canada's Wonderland. A lot of things have changed. I know a lot of you know, knew that I liked Behemoth as my number one before. Um, so far this season, things have changed greatly. Um, so Yukon Striker is my number one. Beh uh, Leviathan's my number two. I had to think, I almost said Behemoth again because I'm so used to ranking it there. Leviathan's my number two. Vortex is my number three. And Behemoth is my number four. I'm hoping this Friday that I can change that again. I think I just had a really um, lackluster airtime experience on Behemoth. I talked to other people, that wasn't the case for them. So I'm gonna ride it again and hopefully it bumps up above Vortex. But that night on Season Householders Night, my ranking was Yukon Striker, Leviathan, Vortex, then Behemoth. Um, so I'm super excited. Again, we will be at the park Friday and Sunday. Friday, I'll be there all day filming some really cool segments for you guys. Again, Craiga and I have a very exciting segment that we're going to be launching um, basically called Ride Challenges, um, where we challenge each other with our all season fast lane to stay on a ride and continuously ride. And whoever chickens up first has to complete um, sort of like a not a reward, the opposite of a reward. <laughs> so like a failure, um, like e eating like, you know, a ghost pepper or something stupid like that. So hopefully you guys enjoy that because I'm looking forward to that. We will also be raising money for a cause in doing so. Um, so again, we will be trying to get a thousand rides on Yukon Striker before the season is over and fundraising while we do it and donating money um, to a good cause. So again, that is just part of our morale on the channel and our goal to always be um, striving to do better as a channel as we grow. So hopefully you guys enjoy that as well. Um, but nonetheless, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I haven't reviewed. Again, the theming is absolutely impressive. It is still under construction. Frontier Canada is delayed. It should be open by next weekend, maybe not this weekend. And maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe it'll be open this weekend, but I'm, I'm going to guess next, next weekend. The theming around the station is awesome. It looks like you're on top of a mountain when you're standing there. I like all the rock work they threw into Yukon Striker. So around you, it looks very like, you know, the grassland area. Um, of Yukon, but then Yukon Striker itself looks like you're on top of a mountain and, and I really like that effect. It gives the coaster absolutely impressed. Um, the ride experience is a lot better than a lot of people were giving credit um, to it before we saw the real POVs. Again, this thing is going to haul in summer, let me tell you. It hauled with a full load of people in very cold weather. So it was about four degrees Celsius upon arriving and it got to like seven degrees Celsius only during the media day. And this thing was hauling that vertical loop has so much speed. So I'm truly excited to see how this thing hauls in summer. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed my review of Yukon Striker. It is definitely my number one at the park and you gotta go check it out this summer at Canada's Wonderland. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good one. Bye.